conceptual kinds of things. Most of them are experiential kinds of things. Trying to talk someone out of depression, it's a laborious process. We're using our language, the things that we say to people, the things that we suggest to people to change the quality of their experience. It's not just changing the way that they think. I happen to be a huge fan of cognitive therapy, as you'll discover. A lot of the things that I do are based in cognitive therapy. But cognitive therapy, CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, has one serious limitation built right into it. It's so cognitive. And people live on many dimensions of experience. And hence the reason for calling this a workshop on experiential approaches. What are the things that we can do to help people absorb helpful ideas, helpful perspectives on many different levels? Well, let's come to these four questions. The answer to all four questions is yes. Question one, yes, there are patterns that insulate people against depression. The problem is they don't know they have these resources. They don't know they have these patterns. When I ask somebody, gee, what you've been through is something that would be really depressing to somebody. You're not depressed. Why not? They offer me very insightful answers like, uh, I guess I must just have good genes. Or I guess uh, just lucky. Uh, gee, I'm an American. You know, we're strong. Those are the qualities of answers I would get. Obviously, that's not the pattern that's regulating their experience. But yes, there are patterns. And that's been the task all along for me and other people like me in this field. You know, Aaron Beck articulated very early on what some of the cognitive distortions are. Those are some of the patterns I'm referring to. Those are cognitive patterns. Others have focused on the relational patterns that set people up. But I want to give you an insight into what many of these patterns are. But there's the answer to question number one. Yes, there are ways that people have of organizing internally that actually insulate them against depression. Our job is identify those patterns. And then for question number two, how do we make them teachable? How do we make them learnable? That's why you're here for today and tomorrow to be able to take the things that I'm talking about and convert them into practical interventions, the easiest way to define psychotherapy is pattern interruption and pattern building. How can I help this person stop doing what they're doing and start doing something else? The question is, what are the salient patterns we need to target? And there's the value of the experiential approaches, including things like hypnosis, mindfulness, guided imagery, as well as strategic task assignments that help people build the kinds of skills, build the kinds of resources that are known to make a difference. Question number three, can we demonstrate these things work? Yes, there's a huge body of literature that is continuing to grow. We've got a good idea of a lot of things that make a difference. Now, this is an important point for all of us. One of the things that we've discovered about depression over time, and think about the implications of this statement, depression has a very high response rate to placebo-based interventions. Depression has a high response rate to placebo-based interventions. What that translates to in plain language is you can do almost anything and your client will tell you they feel better. That's why there are how many advocates for how many approaches. If I ask you, do you are you effective in working with depression, the majority of you, if not all of you, would say yes. And then if I ask you, so what exactly do you do, you'll tell me about whatever your therapeutic approach is, whatever your therapeutic philosophy is, whatever your therapeutic style is. And because of your successes, you will believe that that's the right way to treat depression. And you wouldn't be wrong about that. If what you're doing works, it works. 
But it's easy to believe that that's because that approach works as opposed to the fact that depression is so responsive to almost anything. Short term. Getting people to feel better isn't the same as helping people be better. There are people who will come out of a therapy session, they got a chance to vent their feelings, they got a chance to cry, you gave them a lot of support, you gave them a lot of Kleenex, they walk out and with that faint smile they tell you, thank you, I feel better, and you think you did therapy. And maybe you did. I wasn't there, I don't know. But if we start to make that distinction between feeling better and being better, and the way that this shows up, one of the most common telltale signs is in terms of relapses. Most of you would have been told as a part of your clinical training that depression is a recurrent illness, quote unquote, a recurrent illness. Well, if we look at it purely statistically, there's evidence for that, that if somebody has a single episode of major depression, they are now at an elevated risk for a second episode of major depression. And if they have a second episode, they're more likely to have a third. And if they have a third, they're far more likely to have a fourth. And if they have a fourth, they're far more likely to have a fifth. And each episode increases vulnerability to further relapses. Here's the proving ground about therapy that actually works, that has an enduring quality to it. You can help someone solve a problem. That isn't the same as teaching problem solving. So in terms of the fourth question, is there evidence that when people learn these patterns that it reduces their vulnerability to relapse? The answer is yes, and for me, that's one of the greatest aspects of all the things I'm going to talk about. Prevention value. That when you're doing therapy with people, you're not just doing therapy. You're also reducing risk factors. You're also reducing vulnerability to relapses. And when those relapses don't happen, then you know you've done the work you needed to do. That you've been able to not just help this person feel better, but be better.